Today, I have an action plan for you. And first, I want to start out with some gratitude. Big thank you to Lita, Jordan, and Lara for your ongoing support of the Relationship Alive podcast. And if you're finding the podcast to be helpful, please consider joining them in helping ensure that the Relationship Alive podcast can continue. All you have to do is visit neilsatin.com slash support or text the word support to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. And you can choose whatever feels right for you. And so grateful in advance for your help. Now, if it doesn't feel right to you to donate to the show, that's okay. No hard feelings. Um, of course, I really appreciate it if you can. But if you can't, then other ways you could contribute that would be really helpful are simply getting the word out. And this is something you probably already do, but in case you don't, um, just telling as many people as possible about Relationship Alive is really helpful. Sharing episodes that have been meaningful for you on Facebook, also really helpful. And finally, if you listen via iTunes or uh, the podcast app on an iPhone, um, leaving a review of Relationship Alive is also really helpful because it helps us show up in the search results. So if someone searches on like Relationship Podcast or Love Podcast or whatever it is, the more reviews we have, the higher we show up. And that also helps new people find the show. So any way of helping to get the word out is also so helpful and so appreciated. I think that's it. Let's get on with the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Satin. And I'm kind of laughing at the moment because I'm here again under a blanket and if you've been a regular listener to the show, you know that I have these moments every so often where things are just a little bit chaotic in the world around me. And uh, it's actually kind of funny. Yesterday, I was about to hop on a conversation with Catherine Woodward Thomas, which is going to come out next week, all about calling in the one and how to call in the one, even if you're already in partnership, and what that even means. I was getting ready to hop on a call with her and, and literally two minutes before I hear this sound and I look out the window and there's a tree crew outside about to do their work. And let me tell you, of course, I appreciate the tree crews doing their work because that's what helps ensure that we have electricity in the winter months when trees and limbs can come toppling down on uh, on power lines. However, I don't always appreciate their work when I'm about to record. So I ran outside and looked up at the dude who is in his uh, bucket, you know, getting ready to go up into the tree, chainsaw in hand. And he saw me coming and took one uh, side of his ear protection off. And so I hollered up to him you know, I'm so sorry, but I live in that house right over there, pointing to my house, and uh, and I'm about to record an interview. Is there any possible way that you can work on a different stretch of the road for at least the next hour? And he was actually very gracious. There were two trucks there. <laughs> And he's like, let me talk to my crew. So he got down off the truck. And sure enough, as my interview started, they pulled away with both trucks headed to another part of the street, which was awesome. Until this morning when I sat down to record this episode of the podcast and they're back. For some reason, I think it's probably pushing my luck to go out and talk to them again. So uh, so I'm here under a blanket. And if you hear the sounds of a chainsaw in the background, well, that's, that's why. Um, I'm not in any danger as far as I know. So today, 
I wanted to talk to you about a surefire way to fail in relationship and a surefire way to succeed or at least to uh, increase your chances of success. And just a quick little bit of background. You, you may want to take this action step if you haven't already. The action step is very simple. You can go to neilsatin.com and click the button that says send me the action plan. Um, or you can text the word relationship to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. And it's not... It's not absolutely required, but it's going to be really helpful. It'll give you the best chance of succeeding at the thing that I'm about to tell you to do. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But for now, just remember, go to neilsatin.com, get the action plan if you haven't already. If you have, awesome. And just so you know, this is different than the communication guide. So if you have the communication guide, awesome. Um, but you'll you'll want to get the this too, and uh, the reason it's called an action plan is because uh, in the guide that you get, it goes into detail about the different needs that we share, that you have, that I have, that we all have in our lives, and particularly in relationship. And then I take you through a series of steps to help you understand yourself more, understand your partner more and take action. So that's why it's called an action plan. Um, So that being said, let's dive in to today's show. So what is a surefire way to fail in relationship? A surefire way to fail is to be completely focused on getting your own needs met. And you can think of this in a way as like, you know, there's a way of doing that that's totally selfish, right? Where you're not even thinking of the other person. There's also sort of an enlightened way of having this approach in relationship where you know yourself and you know your needs and you take responsibility for your needs and and maybe you don't even expect your partner to meet all your needs. And so you're you're very self-aware and yet still totally focused on yourself. What is my partner doing for me? What are they not doing for me? Are they meeting my needs? Are they not meeting my needs? Now, when I talk about needs, there is a very specific way of understanding that that you get in that action guide I was telling you about a moment ago. But, you know, if you don't want to go and check out the action guide, then you can put that into whatever terms make sense to you. If you are focused on simply getting your own needs met, then you are destined to grow apart from your partner and to be sort of in the dark about the deepest things that make your partner tick. And you'll actually ironically end up with your needs not being satisfied. So it's kind of ironic in that way, right? Like if you're focused totally on getting your own needs met, then in the end, they probably won't be met. Um, and there are any number of reasons why that's the case. So, and, and it makes sense also that you would try that way. <laughs> you would, you'd be like, well, I, I want to know, I know me and I know how to express what I need. And so I'm just going to talk about what I need and my partner will show up for that and all as well. And that is great, except that it has the unfortunate side effect that I just told you about, which is ultimately you grow apart. Now, that isn't to say that you should go in totally the opposite direction and forget about your needs and, um, you know, subvert your needs or, or any of that. That's not what I'm saying. Your needs are important. Don't get me wrong. Very important. And perhaps one of the most important factors in determining your success in relationship is your ability 
to show up for your partner's needs and to show up for them not just in a way that you know kind of honors them or or is like yeah I'll meet your needs if you meet not my needs you know where you're kind of trading back and forth or where you're giving in order to get that's not very sustainable either what is sustainable is each of you, you and your partner, showing up for each other, taking an active interest in what each other's needs are, and then making it part of your mission. How do I ensure that my partner actually gets their needs met? Now, this is one place where the nuances of what needs are can come into play because let's face it, we can have some pretty distorted views of what we actually need. And, you know, I hate to say it, but I'm even thinking of those conversations that I used to have with my parents when I was a kid where they would say, you know, and it was horrible. They would say, do you really need that or do you just want that? And I, you know, actually hated them for that question um, because of course I needed it, right? Otherwise we wouldn't have been having the conversation. Um, However, here we are back in that same boat of being willing to look at what it is that we need, but not through this lens of, do you just want it or do you need it? More through the lens of, what do you really need? Because things that can seem like a need, if you drill down into them, they're actually fulfilling a deeper need. And then if you drill down further, that's actually fulfilling an even deeper need. So the needs that I talk about in that action plan are pretty much as deep as you can get in terms of the things that we need to feel happy and fulfilled in our lives. So again, neilsatin.com action plan or text the word relationship to 33444. Okay. But again, I trust that you can go through that work on your own too. Like you can actually look at your needs and be like, what is that need? What is that actually, that thing that I think that I need? What is it satisfying? Is there a deeper need? And is there a need under that? And see how deep you can go until you're literally at that point where you're like, you know what? I don't think, I don't think it gets any deeper than this. I think this is really at the basis of why I need what I need. And then just to help you out here, the more that you're focused on getting those core needs met versus like the higher level things that you thought they were about, then the happier you're going to be. Because the vehicles for meeting our needs, those can vary. And in fact, once you realize what your actual true need is, we often experience a huge amount of flexibility in determining what the vehicle for meeting those needs can be. Often those things that we think are our deepest needs, you know, that, you know, that we operate from, those needs are more like vehicles for meeting our needs. Is that making sense? So for you, what you want to do is start thinking about what are my partner's deepest needs? What are their needs beneath their needs? And again, this could be a great conversation for you to have with your partner where you ask them about their needs and then ask them if they'd be willing to go even deeper with you and just explore whether or not there's a layer underneath that. Now, I will warn you that there's a potential for that to get contentious, especially if this question of needs being met has been a cause for disagreement between you and your partner or discontent. So this would be a good opportunity to get the communication guide if you haven't gotten that yet. And of course, to listen to all of our amazing episodes here on communicating um, with Harville Hendricks, um, Last week's episode with Deborah Tannen was another great one. Um, just to really ensure that you have a solid foundation in how you're going to approach a conversation like that. Uh, if you haven't gotten the communication guide yet, you just go to neilsatin.com slash relate 
or text the word RELATE to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. So again, this could be a great opportunity to connect with your partner, to have them feel like you really care and like you're trying to get them. You're trying to understand who they are at the deepest level. And not in a way of judging them, hopefully, for what they need, but in a way of uncovering them. And you can make it really clear to them, I want to know what you need because I want to do a better job of showing up for you and your needs. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, this sounds really dangerous. Not that it's dangerous to know my partner's needs, but it's dangerous to take on fulfilling my partner's needs. Like, what if they, what if they don't reciprocate? What if I don't get my needs met in return? That's horrible. And in fact, sometimes, and I've been in relationships like this, right? Where it feels like, oh, I'm just giving all the time, giving, giving, giving. And, and that can start to feel like a state of deprivation. That's also not what I want for you. In the end, this only really works if both of you are showing up. However, because we are so often living in a state of deprivation, it could be that your partner is feeling so tapped out that your partner is actually feeling so deprived that they don't have anything to give or that they're also there thinking like, well, I'm not going to give because, you know, I'm not getting what I want. And, you know, like that sort of catch 22 cycle can go on forever and can be destructive in relationship, as I was talking about at the very start of this episode. So get yourself out of that cycle and figure out what your partner needs you can do this through a conversation or you can do this by being something of a detective and uncovering the clues about what your partner really needs. One place where this has come out a lot is the conversation about love languages. Like, what is what is my love language? What is my partner's love language? And that's kind of along the lines of what I'm talking about, but that's just one way of communicating with each other that you love someone. And just as a hint, one of your most core basic needs is for love and connection. So when you talk about love languages, you're talking about vehicles for meeting your need to feel love or to feel connected. And on that level, five can actually sometimes be an oversimplification. But let's just go with that for the moment. You can be a detective and figure out what are my partner's love languages and do I show up for them in, in that way? And am I willing to do that consistently? Now, it may be that you have done that because love language is part of our conversation as a culture now about love and how to love. So maybe that's old hat for you. So again, I encourage you to start looking at other needs more deeply and see, am I showing up for my partner? If they were to rate me on a scale of one to 10, would they say that I'm meeting this need at a 10 or would they say it's more like a two or a three? And if it's more like a two or a three, then you're in trouble. So I encourage you to, whether it's having a conversation with your partner or trying to figure it out like a detective, to be willing to get more clear understanding of what is true for your partner and what they need, and then to act on it, to actually show up for your partner and see what happens if you are willing to just give, to enjoy the giving, to enjoy what it feels like to know someone that well and to try to get to know them better and then to try and show up for them that way. I can tell you that and perhaps you've experienced this at times in your life. For me, it's really rewarding to show up that way. It's really rewarding. 
And if you're in a relationship where you're feeling deprived and where your partner is feeling deprived, then just your willingness to show up with that kind of energy can turn the whole dynamic around. Now, if after time it doesn't change anything, then maybe that's worth having a conversation with your partner, a deeper conversation about relationship and what you each expect from relationship and what your agreements are around relationship and how you're going to show up. I, I hope for you that that's part of your ongoing conversation with your partner anyway, but in case it isn't, that's good to add to the mix for sure. But literally this experiment, could you could do it for 30, 60, 90 days and just see what happens. You know, unless you're in a truly abusive situation, in which case, get out. Um, what you may find is that by showing up in this way, when you feel deprived, when your partner feels deprived, when you feel disconnected from each other, it could add that level of energy and enthusiasm to your, the container of your relationship. And also your partner could feel so full, full and filled up that they want to give back. Now, again, you don't want to give in order to receive, but giving, 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 and never receiving, that gets old too. And that's not what I wish for you. So this isn't about subjecting you to some sort of trap where now you're always the giver and you're never receiving. This is more about an experiment to just see what happens. If you change the flavor of your relationship by showing up with your willingness to give, with your willingness to meet your partner's needs, then does that create more space for you to have more positive conversations about your relationship? Does your partner's giving mechanism just open up on its own? Do they start asking you questions like, what are you doing? Do they get suspicious? And if they get suspicious, that's a great reason to, it's, a, it's actually a great place to be. It's a great thing to uncover. Because if they get suspicious, what that shows you is that at the core in your relationship, you don't feel safe. You feel like the other person is out to get you, that they want something from you. And on the one hand, yeah, of course I want something from you. I want your love. I want your connection. I want all of you. You know, I want to I want to make love. I want to make an amazing life together. Like those are the kinds of things that come up for me just in this moment. So of course I do. But I don't want to take advantage of you. I don't want you to have to compromise who you are. But so much of what what uh we think of as relationship ends up being those compromises, right? Those like sacrifices of who we really are in order to somehow stay connected with a person. But at our deepest core, when we're sacrificing ourselves that way, we're, we're losing safety. We're losing safety within ourselves. And then we're also losing safety in relationship to our partner because we don't feel like we can be who we are. So we're always on our guard, right? We're only going to show them what we think they need to see in order for us to stay safe. So this is part of a larger conversation about fostering the safety in your relationship. Now, since I've mentioned a few of the things that I have to offer you, like the, the action guide that we talked about, the communication guide, this might be a good time to also mention the course that Chloe and I teach called Thriving Intimacy. Um, you can find out more information about it if you go to neilsatin.com slash course, and uh, that will redirect you to the site that Chloe and I have together called The New Love Paradigm, and you can read all about the course that we teach. And uh, we'll probably be doing a webinar in sometime in the near future about the course, but all the information is right there for you, so you can see... Um, what you learn and how it all builds on itself. And one of the core fundamental things that we spend the first three sessions on are all of the skills required and capacities required to foster safety in your relationship. 
you get safe in order to then take risks because the risks are where it gets really juicy and fun, but you're taking a risk in an environment that is inherently safe for you, which is a big difference than taking risks in an environment that doesn't foster your safety. Um, so I wanted you to know about that, but I don't want to veer too much off the topic here. Also because I think this is almost enough. Uh, this is a good assignment. So your assignment is figure out what your deepest needs are. Figure out what your partner's deepest needs are. Figure out the vehicles for meeting those needs, both yours and your partner's. And then remember that if you are focused solely on getting your own needs met or primarily on getting your own needs met, then that is almost surely a recipe for ultimate disaster. Okay, maybe not disaster, but growing apart, growing dissatisfied. On the other hand, if you can make it your responsibility, your mission to support your partner, to fulfill their needs at a really high level, and ultimately, if you're both doing that for each other, and that's the, that's the garden that you create, of your relationship together, then you are going to feel what it's like to thrive together. It's as simple as that. At least on some level, it's as simple as that. And again, this is a big experiment for you. And the purpose of the experiment is, one, to see what, what will happen, two, to see if you got it right, and three, to create a difference in the dynamic that's happening with you and your partner. And hopefully that difference is a positive one that uncovers other information that can take you to an even deeper level of being connected, of being related, and in the way that it uncovers obstacles to your connection, well then, great, let's uncover those obstacles and then figure out what to do next, which is part of being curious, being always oriented toward growing and being willing to do whatever it takes to find connection and happiness in your relationship. And then that comes back on you. So I know I keep saying don't give in order to get, but the truth is it does come back on you one way or another because you either learn how to love and you learn how to love better than you've ever loved before and then you, that could maybe be something that you take to a different relationship, or you see the power that you have in showing up that way to change everything in your relationship. And this is just one way. There are so many ways that you can show up in your relationship differently and see the impact that you're having. But this is just one way, and it's a powerful way. So, I appreciate that you have listened this whole time, and I want to remind you that if you haven't joined us in the Facebook community yet, the Relationship Alive community on Facebook, come join us, share in the conversation, share your discoveries and your experiments with us. And, uh, and also, if you are finding this podcast to be helpful, uh, please make a donation to help support the mission of Relationship Alive and ensure that we can continue. And the way to do that is to visit neilsatin.com slash support or text the word support to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. And you can just choose something that feels right for you. Sending you blessings and love and courage and looking forward to hearing from you. Until then, take care and I will see you next week with Catherine Woodward Thomas. Take care.